So what are some things that states can do to adopt or adapt the NEPTP framework? And I kind of put this in the lens of questions because and it's and it's cyclical in some ways, they're all connected to one another. And I'm hoping that I sort of give you that visual. But the idea is how do we, um, and it's iterative, right? Like you're gonna, con con this is not a one and done. You're not gonna go out and buy machines and access for everybody and then consider yourself done. You need to continue to keep through this. So how can we ensure, a question that a state board can ask is how can we ensure equitable access for all students and educators? Well, some things that you can be focusing on is infrastructure devices and connectivity. And while it's not ed tech specific, there are lots of buildings, school buildings, right? Schools construction is happening that needs to take place, right? We know that our infrastructure in terms of our school buildings is um, replaced. What are we doing in the construction process too to make sure that those are spaces that digital access and devices can work, right? Building with cinder block might not be an option anymore because that does block your Wi-Fi um, in certain places, but to be thinking about as an infrastructure um, in particular school buildings, how are you, how can, how can it support? So again, focusing on infrastructure devices and connectivity. The next Julia, question, if I could, uh, yeah. let me add one thing to that, because in addition to asking how we can ensure, you might also want to ask what the current state of that is in your state. Like how many school buildings are in fact wired to a certain standard, because that way that paints a picture of the current state and then helps guide your discussions about what the future state, how you try to get to the future state. Sorry to interrupt, totally. but I wanted to make that point. Yeah, totally. And it, it's going to be unique based on your states too, right? Uh, urban versus rural and funding levels and infrastructure limitations and, and things of that nature. So some things to just be thinking about, right? Um, uh, you know, rural states might prioritize improving connectivity while urbans might be focusing on scaling up professional learning, right? So again, looking at the different ways that you put this together. So another question is, what professional learning strategies support teachers in integrating technology? Well, you want to maybe emphasize continuous support. Uh, Every Student Succeeds Act really talks about job embedded, you know, uh, sustainable professional learning. And we want to see that. And then maybe it's not about them learning how to use a particular tool. If you're a science teacher, then maybe I need to be thinking about how technology supports a particular content, you know, standard that I'm trying to reach. Or um, I know everybody's talking about AI because that's what I feel like I'm talking about AI half the time if I'm not talking about cybersecurity. <laughs> But how does AI then support that? You know what I mean? Or what tools are available? Or what kind of literacy? I, I think about um, good chatbot queries are actually based out of social studies. You're asking good research questions, right? So how do you get better? So there's ways to align some of those um, standards in some ways. But again, really emphasizing continuous support and digital tools, right? Like how are they getting access to that and everything else? The next question is, how can we adapt our digital learning plans to our unique state needs? Right, a question we ask. Well, you want to address those urban versus rural challenges and funding constraints um, and, and whatnot. And I really want to say that I think that um, state boards lead the way in essence because they're setting policy, they're creating governance structures, and, and hopefully in some ways you're ensuring that resources are allocated effectively, right? And you can also advocate for sustained funding and establish professional learning programs that can help educators integrate technology in meaningful ways. The other question is, how do we build partnerships though to enhance digital learning? This is not K-12's lift alone at all, right? You need to be thinking about how it does connect to other initiatives that are going on in your states and whatnot. And again, state agencies could be collaborating with one another, they could be collaborating with tech providers, and they could also be leveraging federal programs that are out there. So I just want you to be thinking about how states can create or update their digital learning plans to reflect the NETP report priorities, as well as really thinking about how they ensure that all students have access to quality digital resources, and that how does these state agencies and local agencies too, and tech providers and federal programs support infrastructure upgrades and professional development that is out there. I, um, before I came to CEDA as staff, I actually was in the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction in Washington State. And we often talked a lot about how Title II, right, is for professional learning, but a lot of folks and a lot of um, local uh, education agencies leave that money on the table from year to year, but we, how do we help them see how they could use those funds in order to implement NETP? And you could be as state boards asking those questions of your SEAs. 